off, I want to say, Kal Halalim La, Yahawa, Baha Shem Yahawa Shai, Baha Shem Kakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Shalom to the brothers in the highways and byways in this work. In all sincerity and in all honesty, the sisters, the believers, the helps. Shalom. Now, this is your brother Yawahala from the Kingston, Jamaica camp. Alright, I just want to do a lesson basically on the whole Queen of Heaven. You get me? Um, given that it was Mother's Day yesterday, I just want to highlight the, the, the similarities, especially between um, Mother's Day and the whole Queen of Heaven worship. You understand me? And um, just going to go into some history here. It says the historical Mary revealing the pagan identity of the Virgin Mother. Mary Mag uh, Magdalene is only the only New Testament Mary who merits um, a revivalist or so agenda these days in the historical Mary revealing the pagan identity of the Virgin Mother uh, Michael Jordan right urges that urge urges that the whole Jesus and his name is not Jesus, but Yahweh Shai is what his true name is. You understand me? Christians and everybody else in the world call him Jesus, but that's not the true name. It's Yahweh Shai. And the Father, Heavenly Father name is Yahweh. You understand me? M um, Jesus' mom probably was a historical person. Her portrait has been fabricated by the Roman Catholics to suit its own political purpose in particular Jordan urges the church has um, surpassed the pagan roots of the Marian tradition and this is actually a thing where the, the Roman Catholics took the whole Mary um, being a virgin gave birth um, um, the Immaculate Conception and gave birth to um, Jesus, um, a holy mother, she wasn't touched, she wasn't defiled, all of that. And if even if you look into it today, um, our customs today, where you have a lot of single mothers and they're reverent or, or, or they're, they're praised for, for being life givers, the life bearer, you see me? Oh, my mother brought me here on earth, oh, she, 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 she um, nine months carried me through, and you know, they're looked at as some sacred or 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 or, or um, special beings because of that you understand me and it's going back because of this mary um mary in the in the catholic church is seen as um a godhead as well you understand me that's how she's seen you understand me and that's how they do it in society no everybody you see me in Israel reverend are, 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 are give some homage to their mother their mother this their mother that the mother this the mother without my mommy almost everybody in Israel does that is me touch the next article here um, Christmas is about the birth of Tammuz and we're gonna get into this you understand me again I just want to go into some history before I touch scriptures um, as a matter of fact, we can get some scriptures upon this because, as I say, yo, there's nothing new under the sun. You understand me? So, this is Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done and there is nothing new under the Sun so all that I'm giving to you is um, basically things that has passed down from 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 years even before Yahusha made it on the scene you get me these are things passed down years coming to know but it's just taking on different forms or iteration right but it's the same thing same story being played out and we're gonna get into that you understand me this is um i'll get back into the article every year during the holiday season millions of households celebrated christmas based on the ancient mythology and folklore many are unaware of the legend 
and history behind the tradition they celebrate. They will say Jesus is the reason for the season. But what they do not know is that is that the reason is synonymous with another man slash God from ancient Babylon. Alright? Christmas is about Tammuz. The tradition of the Christmas season can be traced back to the celebration of the winter solstice. It is when the days start to become longer as, as the sun appears to rise higher in the northern um, hemisphere. In the um, occult world of ancient Babylon, as this has come from back then, you know, you have to understand the different time periods because you have the first Babylonian Empire and that got taken down by the, the, the um, if you do your research, it got taken down by the Assyrian Empire, the Syrian and some Persians, right? They took over the Babylonian Empire, um, hence the rise of the Assyrian Empire. The Assyrian Empire ruled before it got taken down by the Neo-Babylon Empire. That was the New Babylon Empire. Right? Before that got taken down by the Medes and Persian. Or the Persian, the Persian Empire and then you have the Medes. You see me? Medes and Persia. Then that got taken down by the Greek Empire. Then the Greek Empire got taken down by the Roman Empire. You understand me? So you have these different um, empires coming down. You understand? So if you understand the history, you know, say, yo, if this has come from Babylon, I'm not talking about the Neo-Babylon Empire, this has come from the first Babylonian Empire. You see me? This has been around for ages, but taking on different forms. You understand me? And the reason why I'm bringing this out, I'm going to get into Tammuz and, and some of the things for Tammuz. Let me, let me continue. Um, this was a time to celebrate the return of the sun symbolic of the reincarnation of Nimrod's son Tammuz so it, so it was said that Nimrod's son is Tammuz and if you know about Nimrod you know about Nimrod Genesis Genesis 10 verse 8 and Cush begot Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. Get that? He began to be a mighty one in the earth. And that's huge. So he got well known. Well famous. Well popular. You understand me? He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said... Even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, and he began, and he, Salakia, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babal. Babal is what you call Babylon. Babal means confusion. You see me? Or Babel in this one. And um, Eric and Akkad. And Kalna in the land of Shinar. You understand me? So this man empire was the Babylonian empire. You understand me? With him he had his so-called mother slash wife. Um, Ceramesis. So if this man became a mighty hunter before the Lord. Because now he is still reverenced or worshipped as the sun god. His reverence or worship as the sun god know in this time. And in this time, it's reverence as Sunday. Sunday is actually the sun's day. And that's where he's reverence. Right? His wife slash mother, if you read the history, he married our mother say yo she and him um, get married. You understand me? And had Tammuz, their son. Which we are getting at the same article, and the she being the 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 mother slash wife was reverence or worship as Saturn's day, Saturnalia, Saturday, Saturn's day. You understand me? So too was the son reverence and how this how this all play in a Marian 
Jesus because um she ceramicist after Nimrod died she said she was impregnated by the, the, the um mythologies again or history she was impregnated by the rays of the sun and by the time she get impregnated she she gave birth to um Tammuz which let me get into it but you see what may I say yo this I come from and this is talking about from Genesis you see me um according to the legends Ceramesis um supernaturally conceived and bore a son Tammuz on the 20 so, so let me go again according to legend Ceramesis the same woman who just a highlight supernaturally conceived and bore a son I remember when I tell her say yo um the claim was that this, the rays of the sun after Nimrod died and his spirit went up into the sun um the rays of the sun shine upon her and she became pregnant and bore a son Tammuz and hear what them say Ceramesis supernaturally that means it was not naturally and it doesn't seem logical it's something mythological or something um um supernatural that happened to her and it says here conceived and bore us and bore a son tammuz on december 25th after the death of her husband nimrod the same nimrod i'm gonna speak about in the scriptures from back in the genesis days the same great hunter but then you understand me so if this man is reverence or worship even to this day right which go um to this day them call him Ra or Amun Ra you understand me along with some other terms so too is Ceramesis worship today she's worshipped as the queen of heaven Valentine's Day um ties back to her is it me um Easter ties back to her mother's day is worshiping of the queen of heaven them just spin it until they say oh you're giving reverence to your mom your mom is special your mom is this it's bs yo this this is some this is some history you understand me she um uh yeah the word there she whatever that word is married Tammuz believing him to be a reincarnation of him so Ramesses created the um, Babylonian doctrine of Nimrod defying him as a spirit being um, claiming that an evergreen tree sprang f um, forth overnight from a dead tree from a dead tree stump symbolizing the springing forth of his spirit bringing new life every year on the anniversary of of his birth the 25th he would visit the evergreen tree bearing bearing gifts you see me and this is just um babylonian mythology and if you follow it up you understand me and look up mother's day it's gonna lead back to some um story of some greek empire and how the greek gods did this and all of that and you know the god of sex and wine and revelry are the god of this or that it all comes back from this everything started somewhere and as we read earlier is in what the scripture say yo there is nothing new under the sun all of this was there before in different time period them call it different things and them twist for them agenda to it, for them um, story, for them history, right? Um, for them thing to it. To this day, you understand me? To this day, we worship, no, well, our people worship it as Mother's Day, or they worship it as Easter, or they worship it as Christmas, or they call, they call it different things from how they did back then. They celebrate it differently than how they did back then. You understand me? That's just simply what it is. Uh, this is Ezekiel eight, verse fourteen. Then he brought, then he brought me to the door. 
Then he brought me to the door of the gates. Um, the, then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was towards the, the north. And behold, there sat there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Why are they weeping for Tammuz? Because of the celebration at that time, when them celebrate the whole um, death and resurrection or so of Tammuz. Well, people been worshiping these things, yo. Been following these 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 um gods, these these made up gods, yo. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abomination than these. Yo, Mafa, highlight them as me I get them. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and altar, there were, there were about five and twenty men with their backs towards the temple of the Lord and their face towards the east and they worship the sun towards the east come on man what did I highlight earlier about Nimrod being the sun god so you have women weeping for Tammuz right men worshipping um, the sun which leads back to um, Nimrod right and you don't think they won't worship um, Ceramesis? You don't think she plays a part in all of this? Remember I highlighted to you that she's now depicted as Mary Magdalene or not Mary Magdalene, Mary, Mother Mary, Holy Mary. She's now depicted as that one, as you say, as we read earlier, she gave um, supernatural birth to Tammuz. The same supernatural birth to this day they're talking about Mary giving birth to Jesus, yo. No man never impregnate her, no man never touch her, and she just get pregnant and gave birth to a son. Everybody has said, oh, that for happen, that no makes. Yes, yes, that's the power of God. God alone and God. God sent the Holy Spirit to impregnate her and then run with it. And this is now um, a religious cult. Something with them tie into and say this is actually fictional, this is um this is actually historical, this is actually something that happened. It's the same thing now. So when them come and them tell us say your mother's day, you know, um going through the streets yesterday, from now from Saturday, the place was lined off with people selling gift baskets. And if you go over them and ask them how much them tell you. 10 grand 15 grand in the US that would be roughly 150 dollars you see me 180 dollars people telling you you get me for a basket to give your mother and their quote is your mother's love is priceless you see me your mother's love and care the things that she she's given to you is priceless there's no price you can put on it so you should go and and buy things and go and celebrate your, your mother's love the things that your mother really really these aren't things that they do on father's day father's day they'll acknowledge it they'll say oh to the fathers them and their excuses you have a lot of um bum for dads you have a lot of dads who, who didn't care. A lot of dads who walk up on them family. A lot of dads who, And they're like, are, they're my sperm donors. They're not fathers, but sperm donors. You see me? So fathers aren't respected or loved as mothers. And that's their excuse. But they don't realize the spirit behind all of this, yo. There is a spirit behind all of this. You understand? This is Jeremiah 7 verse 18. The children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. Come on, man. You don't think that they're still doing it to this day? Scripture said earlier there's nothing new under the sun. And I told you every time period they did it different, they celebrated it different. 
to know them have them basket and thing line up them have them gatherings and get together them have them them the people them come and present their mothers with nice fancy gift and social media is the new crave so everybody i take picture with my son or my daughter come give me look at what they gave me guys oh gosh i love this thank you so much guy my family is the best and everybody oh thank you mother i love you mommy and there's oh yeah why are you giving your mother so much praise yo isn't that her duty to give birth? Isn't that what the Lord said she was supposed to do? To go through those nine months of pain and anguish? To deliver a, a, a newborn? Why not give the Lord praise, yo? Why not call on the Heavenly Father and turn from, you, from these idol worship? No, people will find means and excuse as to why their mother is special. Them stand up on a podium. First, I like, I like to give thanks to God. You know, without God, I wouldn't be here. And second of all, I would love to give, you know, special thanks to my mom. You know, my mom was always there for me, man. And without her, you know, I wouldn't be here today, you know, being presented this honor, you know, to look at you people. That's the speech they give. And check it out. Every, when it, whether it be in movies, whether it be in sports, whether it be in music and entertainment, you check it out, yo. That's the spirit behind our people. They worship the woman. And it goes back to the queen of heaven worship. Right? And to pour out drink offering unto, unto other gods. That they may provoke me to anger. And this is something that they constantly do. Why, te why it need to be a day you need for, 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 for reverence your mother? Why it need to be a day you need to, to, to give her all the, the, the praise that she deserves for the hard work she, that she's done? Come on, man. Why is it one day? Did the scripture say that? No. Scripture never teach that, yo. Isn't it? The Lord say it by law. This is a law, actually. This is Deuteronomy 5, verse 16. Honor thy mother. Honor thy father and thy mother as the Lord power, as the Lord thy power hath commanded thee. It was a command, yo. The Lord commanded us to do this. You understand me? We would have put this as a command is what? Like a commandment. The Lord gave you a command, say, yo, you're supposed to do this. As a father, I tell him, son, I command thee this day that you should ray, ray, ray. You understand me? It's a command that we were given to do what? To honor our fathers and mothers. But in today's society, them honor their mother. Then them father. If them father at all. And them more than honor them mother. Them worship them mother. You see me? They worship the mother. That mother. You understand me? Because that's the spirit. That's the spirit knowing society. It's the spirit of th that has always been there. You get me? The queen of heaven worship that we've been talking about. That, um, that thy days may be prolonged and that it may be well with thee in the land which the Lord thy power hath given thee. So wherever the Lord put we place we, send we, we're supposed to honor our mother and our fathers. Not give special treat and treatments to your mother because it's Mother's Day. What? Why why take a day for we specialize this day to our we honor it to our mothers? Or take a special day to honor it to our fathers. This was not so. And again, the spirit behind Mother's Day is high. Because you don't see the same energy on Father's Day. There is something behind it. So with that, I hope that this lesson was edifying. I want to say, Kal, Allah, Yom, La, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bahashem, Rakaa, Kodash, Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Shalom to the brothers in the highways and byways, doing this work in all sincerity and in all honesty, the sisters, the believers, the helps. Shalom.